In this short lecture, we will learn about the registers. Here you, you can see the basic definition for a register. It's indeed a collection of binary storage elements. So we might have a given number of binary storage elements. We can say that we have three of them, four of them, or any number of them. And each one of them can store one bit of information. In theory, we can consider the register in the form of a sequential logic circuit, which could be defined uh, using the state table or state diagram. However, if the number of the elements that we have for the register increases, then looking at the register in that form and designing it using the, the approaches that we know for the sequential logic circuit design wouldn't work. We will end up with a huge state table or with a complicated state diagram. So for that reason, we'll take some other approaches in order to design the registers as we will see in the next uh, slides, let's say. So we will think of the register most of the time as storing a vector of binary values. The registers will be used in order to store the data and sometimes move the data between different registers and for processing operations. As I already mentioned, we better not to consider the register in registers in the form of a sequential logic circuit because then designing it wouldn't be easy, especially when n becomes large. n here is n is the number of the elements that we have for the register. So instead, we'll take some other approaches. Uh, we can use some predefined combination of circuits and add them to the registers. We will see examples later. In order to do the count up, connect the, we, we will connect the register Philip Phillips to an incrementer. We can also design the individual cells using the regular ways that we have for the uh, sequential logic circuit design because then we will deal only with a single element for which we know that the state table and the state diagram will be quite simple. We will go through examples of designing the registers in it later. In terms of storing the information within a given register, we want to have the information stored in the register for a multiple number of clock cycles. Basically, we don't need to have the information in the register to be updated at each rising edge of the clock or at each falling edge of the clock. Therefore, we need to have a store or a load information signal in order to control this loading of the information or storing of the information. The, Philip, the, the registers that we are going to consider are composed of D Philip Philip elements. So for each cell of the register, we will consider that there is a D Philip Philip sensitive to the rising edge or probably to the falling edge of the clock pass. But if this is the case, let's say if we have the D type Philip Philip here, which represents one element of the register, each time that there is a clock, a rising edge of the clock, the Philip Philip will be loaded with the new data. Or in other terms, the register will be loaded with the new data. And therefore, we need to think of some ways in order to prevent this. Yeah, we, because we, we, we assume that, basically, we assume that data is here. We have the data. Then we load it into the register. And then if the data is gone, we need to have the information still stored. If this is not the case, when the data is gone, we may have zeros as, as the input. And then if the register, if the Philip Philips continue to update their value, the content will be also updated. And as a result, the data that we wanted to store will be lost. So to, to realize the data storage for the registers, we can consider a couple of ways. We need to use a signal 
to block the clock to the register this would be one approach so we don't let the clock reach the Philip Phillips unless we want to load the new information into the into the register or we can use another approach which is to use a signal to control feedback of the output of the register back to its inputs so if we kind of feed back the output of the Philip Phillips to its input side if we do it properly we may, we may keep the data so the the Philip Phillips will be still loaded with the data but it's basically the same data that we already had and whenever you want we should be also able to load the new information into the Philip Phillips and into the register in general so we will see both approaches the other way would be to use different types of <laughs> Philip Phillips like the SR or JK Philip Phillips and then in order to uh, store the, the old data or in order to load the new data to set or reset the Philip Phillips we can use the proper input uh, to the Philip Phillips controls indeed we can provide 00, zero for example in order to keep and store the data in order to control the loading of the data into the Philip Phillips and in general into the register we will use a signal name which is called as load so the load signal will determine whether we want to load the the register with new data or whether we want to keep the old data if load is equal to 1 it means that we will load the values on the data inputs if load is equal to 0 we will store the values which we already had in our Philip Philip here you can see an example of a register with four cells for memory elements for the type Philip Phillips all of them are receiving the clock you can see that they are all connected to the same clock uh, this kind of register is called the register with the parallel load because if we have the rising edge of the clock that rising edge will be received by all the cells and the value the, the data that we have for each cell will be updated at the same time that's why it is called a parallel load but for for this you can see that for now we don't have the load signal introduced so basically it doesn't store the information in this form but it will just receive and keep whatever data we have at d0 d1 d2 and d3 we also have the synchronous reset input for all the flip flops so by this clear input we can reset the register in as a whole so now let's see how we can deal with loading and storing of the data in the flip flops in in the register as a whole indeed as well 